Welcome back, YouTube family, and to another exciting episode on here on K6 Outdoors. Recently in the mail, I got these new edge tamers from the guys at R2 Manufacturing. And uh, in this episode, we're going to show you how they're built, how thick they are, how heavy duty they are, how they mount on your bucket, and how you may use them around your property. Stick around and we'll check it out right after this. As always, if you guys like what you're seeing, hit that thumbs up. Helps the channel out quite a bit. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Become a part of the K6 Outdoors uh, YouTube family. And if you're so inclined, hit that little bell to make sure you get notifications when more videos like this are uploaded. Obviously, you'll see uh, when I post new videos, but that little bell allows you to get notifications on your YouTube app or whatever it is um, when I upload these uh, videos right away. So, so to get started with here, guys, let's take a look at how they're built. They are very heavy duty, made here in the USA. Um, they are, let's go uh, specific here, pull my calipers out. They are exactly 375,000, so three eighths of an inch thick steel is what these are made out of. Um, you will see uh, that they have really high quality welds and they even did a good job of cleaning up all the splatter. I don't see any splatter on the welds. These things really are a gem in my opinion, on how they look. Obviously they're gonna get beat to crap because they're gonna be drug on the ground, smacked into things and all that fun jazz. But to start with, I would give them two thumbs up for the first uh, initial impression on, on your quality here. Now on top here, they've got a weld, oh, nut welded in place, a really nice quality weld around that, the thread to the back side. Then you have this bolt here on the top side that tightens down against your bucket. Now, also on the front, they actually are utilizing this extra hole they use for some of their other accessories. Um, to put on these little um, flat washers um, that will go under the uh, end of the bolt in case you have issues with the twisting when tightening. Sounds like it doesn't happen very often, but it allows you to uh, maintain that pivot point here um, so you can uh, get the, the tighten down way without your, the tamer not twisting. So let's take a, uh, some time here and we'll go ahead and get them installed on the bucket. So installation is extremely simple. All you need is a three quarter inch wrench socket whatever you want to use i prefer to use a a uh, socket here and a ratchet so all you have to do is slide it on here as simple as it seems make sure that the uh screw or the bolt is back far enough uh, and then you tighten it down so throw your ratchet down there whatever it is you need to do and tighten down and like I said, if your tamer starts to twist on you, push one way or the other, you would put this underneath the bolt in the inside to keep it from twisting. Um, just tighten her down good so she won't move. And when she's tight in place, it's not going anywhere. It's locked solid on there. Repeat the same thing on the other side. As I mentioned before, they have these little holes in the side. They sell attachments uh, that you can bolt in there either for hauling your trash cans around. Um, and also uh, they have some extenders you can use that come out like you can kind of use them as a kind of a small set of uh, pallet forks, if you will, um, to lift up like wood or, you know, um, two by fours, landscape timbers, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and install them on the other side here and uh, we'll go try them out. So you'll see how easy it is to put those on and take them off. Just a quick turn of your wrench socket, whatever you want to use, wrench, socket, ratchet, whatever. Um, and underneath you'll see here, um, they sit up tight against the bucket and then you're ready to go. So like I said, the intentions of this is to keep this edge from digging into the ground. So you'll see here, um, it leaves your, your bucket edge um, from the bottom of the tamer to the bucket edge. On this one, it leaves uh, approximately, we'll say, oh, we'll get exact with the calipers here, exactly 0 .8, 0 0.8 inches off the ground. So it'll keep your edge up just far enough off the ground to not dig in, but allow you to pick up a lot of the small stuff you would otherwise um, have to pick up around the property. So a couple of reasons I wanted to pick these up First and foremost, I will be doing snow removal. Obviously in the middle of August, I will not be able to demonstrate that for you today, but rest assured, I will be posting plenty of those videos here in the next uh, few months as here in Iowa, you tend to get a decent amount of snow. But another couple of things that people have said they use them good for is, you know, when you have a pile of leaves up in a big pile to move them somewhere else, you can scrape up, pick up the leaves without making a mess in the yard, uh, moving mulch, um, moving piles of rock in the yard without digging into the grass, moving piles of dirt in the yard, 
really the all the uh, you know the possibilities are endless with these, and it's a matter of you know what you would use them for, and keep them from digging into the ground, right? That's the theme here: is it keeps this edge from digging in the ground and making a mess. Um, it does work with some uh, tooth bars, not specifically which ones, but it sounds like it works with the OEM Kubota ones and such like that. But that's something you're gonna want to maybe uh, get a hold of the guys at R2 and see if they can give you some feedback on which uh, tooth bucket, tooth blade, whatever product, whatever you want to use, call it on the front here um, that they use them with, and if it functions or not. Let's go out. I'm gonna try to pick up some logs. Um, I'm gonna scatter out in the yard, see how well it works. Um, I think the intentions are you, leave, you can leave the bucket and float and it just kind of goes across the ground. So we'll try the bucket and float. We'll try the bucket down, tighten the ground with my front tires off the ground and see how well they work. Here again, I'm not being paid to use these. This is something I saw online um, from some, some other fellow YouTubers and I thought it would be a great thing to do. Um, the guys at R2 Manufacturing uh, look like they run a pretty tight ship there and I think they have a good product. So we'll see how this goes and then uh, we'll go from there. So stick around and we'll do some testing for these. So on my 54 inch bucket, I chose the four inch wide version of the edge tamers. On their website, they have a chart that'll show you which, which size you should get for your bucket. In this specific instance, I have a 54 inch bucket. I chose the four inch edge tamers. They've got three inch, four inch, and six inch, depending upon your bucket and uh, the size of your tractor. And sometimes in certain cases, when you have uneven train, they may even add a third here in the middle. Just keep in mind these are per per uh, per edge tamer you pay, so the more the more the more will be expensive. These four inch ones I believe are sixty-five dollars a piece, and the three inches are a little cheaper, and the six inches are a little more, as you'd expect more material and labor. One thing I want to make sure to note and mention is when you're using this, generally you're going to want to be using it with the bucket in a float position, and what that means is. And then it's not going to be on every tractor, but a majority of tractors, you're going to take your loader handle and you will push it all the way forward. And then on my specific one, you will hear it click. You hear it click there, it locks all the way out. What that does is it bypasses all the hydraulics, essentially, to where it's not putting any pressure on the front loader. So the only weight on the edge tamers is the bucket itself and maybe some of the loader frame. There is no downforce from the hydraulic uh system on the tractor and what that will allow you to do um is to keep you know added weight off the bucket to allow it to float over the ground and not and uh and um not try to dig in this is especially true when you're pushing snow usually you're going to want to use the bucket and the float uh the uh float setting on the loader um not always there will be occasions where you will need to use it um with you know, having down pressure but in this specific instance, it keeps all of the um, excessive pressure off of the loader and allows the edge tamers to do their job, which is why you have the wider wider um, pad here on the on the larger buckets as you get larger. So, so what I want you guys to pay attention to is the beginning here. I'm putting all this down pressure on the bucket. Shortly after that, I go ahead and pop that bucket into float and and keep pushing along the ground to get these logs picked up. And you'll see here from the GoPro view that. It's even getting the leaves picked up off the ground. As you'll see, the bucket's not even picking up gravel off the ground. It's great. I think this is going to work well in the wintertime and help to reduce the gravel that gets in the yard because, you know, even though I have that paddle wheel on my uh, steel yard boss, the less I have to do, the, the better. I mean, I've got other things to be doing than constantly trying to clean up the yard. You're done using them for the day? Here again, it's easy to take them off. Use your three quarter inch a socket wrench. You're gonna use a crescent wrench, adjustable wrench, whatever you wanna call it, go for it. 
Um, all you gotta do is loosen them up and take them off. It's pretty simple. You just uh, back that old bolt off, it slides right off. Just like that. You will see it's gonna get scuffed up on the bottom. As expected, it's steel. It's been painted, but uh, when you're rubbing that much pressure against the rocks, it's gonna tear it up pretty quick. Um, but I don't think you need to worry about the longevity of these bad boys. Like I said, they're built like a tank. Here again, I'll put the link down below here, but Edge Tamers at www.edgetamer.com from R2 Manufacturing. They are patented, so good uh, good little purchase here. I'm super excited about using them in the snow, and I've got some projects here this fall. We'll uh, test them out in more too, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick review of these things and, and kind of get your wheels turning, maybe get you guys to get out and buy a pair of these yourself. Um, right now, I'm not sponsored by these guys, and uh, you know, although you know, maybe that will change in the future, but extremely impressed by these guys at R2 Manufacturing, and they have a good product. Thanks for sticking around on today's episode using these edge tamers. I really think you guys would uh, really appreciate these and how well they, how well they work. They are a very low cost solution um, to uh, you know many different things, whether it be snow removal or whatever it is. I think these were like 65 bucks a piece, so like around $130 ish um, plus shipping to get these edge tamers. Sounds like a lot of money, but a snow blade, snow bucket, whatever it is you're going to use is going to be significantly more. So this could be a good low cost solution for snow removal. Um, here again, I need to test this out, but based upon the testing we've done today, they're probably going to work fantastic. In the videos I've seen, they've also worked really well. So consider it for that. If you don't have snow, maybe if you're doing like mulching, other rock products in the yard, like I said, anything virtually where you want to keep this edge from digging in the ground, it would work well for that. I know some people are going to say you're just a novice operator and you can't do it. You know, you just can't operate a loader. That may be partially true, but at the end of the day, it is still very, very difficult to keep this edge from digging in when you don't want it to, especially when you don't have a bucket level indicator or such as that. So let's, uh, thanks for sticking around today. I appreciate you guys all uh, tuning in to the channel. And if you have any questions, put some stuff down here in the comments. Any feedback, anything you can uh, suggest that would make the channel better, I appreciate it. And uh, until the next video, and I'll see ya.